Welcome back to They Did What? Your source for the internet's craziest, most entertaining stories where I go with them, analyze them, and most certainly make fun of them. Today I'm going to go over a story titled, I've Never Been So Scared. And guys, before you feel inclined to leave because of that candy ASS title, just hear me out. And guys, this story is about a guy, husband, married 11 years, two kids, thought he had a good marriage, as you've all heard that before, and discovered his wife's a cheater. And not just any kind of cheater, a serial cheater. And ultimately, keyword ultimately, makes the right choice and is living a good life. However, let me tell you, you will not believe the amount of crap he has to go through and suffering to finally wake up to reality. <clears throat> and let me tell you, it's a lot. However, I thought we'd be going to go over here, guys, just to show you, making the point, particularly you guys that are relationship type of guys, as I say always, once a cheater, always a cheater. And when you discover this is going on, you need to end it. I know you may feel inclined to carry on for the kids, but let me tell you, the kids know. The kids know you're miserable. Mom's miserable. It's an unhappy situation, and it's going to make them miserable. And trying to be the hero is only going to make things worse. It's better to cut your ties and move on as all these stories go. And, of course, how women don't respect weak men. So this is a longer one. <clears throat> and, again, there will be times that, believe me, Along with me, we'll be slapping this guy. That you guys can have a contest how many times that I smacked this guy in this video. But there's lessons to be learned here. And this guy's eventually living a good life. And by the way, as you can see, this is longer, but a lot of lessons here. So he says here, yesterday I packed my bag and left. No more lies, no more hiding from it, no more personal hurt. I stayed for too long, gave too many chances, and now here I am. As a backstory, my wife and I have been married for 11 years, two kids, and she cheated on me two years ago. There you go. You should have left then. Well, technically it started before that, but I caught her two years ago. Our marriage was rocky by year five. So, six years of rocky marriage. How wonderful. <clears throat> we started growing apart. Annoyances became resentment, resentment became anger, and we began fighting over the smallest things. It felt like we were business partners or roommates. By the time we had one kid and another one on the way, so we tried to work things out. It didn't get better. We didn't communicate. And the kids are there growing up with all this crap going on. It's a terrible situation. <clears throat> I was busy with my career, and because she had a more flexible job, I assumed she would take care of the kids and the house and her job while I focused on my career. Looking back now, that was a huge mistake. I let things fall apart. I took our relationship for granted. I took her taking care of the house and kids for granted. It doesn't excuse what she would end up doing, but I think it's healthy to be able to look back on it and learn from it from future relationships. I should have communicated. I should have helped more too late now. Bro, we can all look back and it's good to analyze things where we went wrong so we can learn. And yeah, if you're working full time and she's working full time but her schedule's flexible and she's taking care of all the shit in the house, yeah, you're kind of fucking washed the dishes and helped out. And I'm sure this guy did. But it doesn't matter. She's still a total, complete a-hole. And yeah, communication is obviously bad. But it takes two to screw a situation up here. And I think you're just trying to... It's easier for this guy to take blame for things as opposed to totally admit that he had a very bad screening process when he chose this woman to be his wife. A few years later, she began to change. Little things. On her phone more, starting to drink a bit more, changing her grooming habits. Started staying awake later, starting to get snappy at me when I asked her what was what she was doing. She put a password on her phone. I confronted her about my suspicions and she unloaded on me, screaming that she wasn't doing anything and how dare I accuse her and I must be projecting so maybe I was the one cheating and just on and on and on. You should never tolerate that bullshit. You say, you just walk away. So when you're ready to communicate like an adult, not screaming like a fucking four-year-old, then we'll talk. I don't you fucking gaslight me. But all the things he described there are classic signs that something's up. I don't need to read them again, but you all heard them. You guys that know what I'm talking about know. <laughs> so I backed down. Smack. There you go. She lost more respect for you. I bought her flowers to apologize. Smack. You're going to apologize for calling her out on her obvious crap that she was obviously cheating on you. Oh, yeah. That's going to make her more attracted to you. And I realized I've been a shitty husband and partner. I started to help out more with the kids, the house, turned down business meetings out of town. I tried to be present, but the reasons I suspected something was wrong in the first place didn't go away. 
Yeah, so it wasn't just because maybe you weren't helping out as much at home, okay? Yeah, if, if you're full-time, she's full-time, and she and then you expect her to raise the kids, do everything in the house, yeah, that ain't fair. So you should do more stuff. But I'm willing to bet you this guy did more, but uh, she was just trying to make an excuse for her actions. I talked to my friends about it, I asked her advice, and they all thought she was doing something. But like good friends, they're just looking out for me, so I thought. So one night I was talking to a good friend, and I told, told him that my wife was asleep upstairs, and I would check once and for all. I took her phone and I locked it with her thumb as she slept. My heart was racing, but there was nothing there. A few short, short deleted texts, some odd half messages, scrolling down further. I got the message from a guy named M. Looks innocent, but I see it. Oops, sorry, didn't use the secret app. What? What app could he be talking about? Even if she's talking to some guy you don't know, that, that, that in itself, there's something's going on. So I started to search her phone. It was and throughout her phone. It was hidden behind folders, but I found her WhatsApp. I opened it. I clicked on the first message and was greeted by a picture of my wife naked, followed by another and another, and a, and a D-I-C-K picture from this guy, and a video, and more and more. I didn't know him, and I was shocked. I saw there was my I saw there with my heart on, on the floor. Sat there with my heart on the floor. I cannot express how I felt in that moment, totally destroyed. Well, bro, sadly, you're not alone. A lot of guys have felt that. There you go. That's all the proof you need of what she's doing. Now, go downstairs. Probably have a shot of something, even though I don't advise alcohol, but he probably needs it. And figure out your plan. Go to the divorce lawyer. Find out your options and dish the bitch. Unfortunately, that's not how that goes. Yet. I started reading. He lives in Las Vegas. She visited him with her two best friends a few months ago. They hooked up. He was a total purr, asking her to do threesomes and sending her shit to wear, trying to get her friends involved. So let me guess, she was out in Vegas on a girl's trip. Mm hmm. The way she spoke back to him wasn't even my wife. She doesn't talk like that. She only likes missionary. She doesn't even want to talk about sexual things. That Who was this person? What a surprise this guy telling the story here only gets missionary and she's the starfish sex and she probably stares at the ceiling probably you know or looking over at the clock and like oh my god five more minutes of this shit you know shocker but with a guy that she respects sees as a prize has respect for oh it's everything it's doggy it's all positions it's tie her up you get the point on my 10th anniversary the conversation went back three years Three years he's talking to this motherfucker. On my 10-year anniversary, I took my wife out of town and planned a romantic night. It turns out when she went to the bedroom to change into something more comfortable, she sent pictures to him first. And they congratulate each other on making it a 10-year mark. If you live in California, you understand why. Yeah, because that means this guy's going to get hammered probably with <clears throat> all sorts of things. I was sitting in our hotel bed. I was sitting in a, in a hotel bed waiting for her like an idiot. Anyway, I lost it. I woke her up, tears running down my face, asking her, why, why, why? Smack! I get you're hurting, and this is terrible, but don't let her fucking see you cry. If you gotta go downstairs and cry and get it out, then go up and confront her, fine. <laughs> I punched a hole through the double-layered wall, plus the glass picture hanging on it. Bro, come on. Blood streaming down my hand. I was a mess. We fought all night. We talked, we fought, we talked. She said, it just happened. He was an old friend who was kind to her, nice, and she wasn't getting that from me. And I said, bullshit. It is bullshit. And by the way, I'm sure your kids woke up at this point here in the punching of the walls and glass breaking and carrying on. Come on, Dad. Keep it under control. We get you hurting here, but still. The next day, we did a lot of talking. I asked her what she wanted to do. Smack! You found this evidence on her phone of all this shit going on for three years, and then you're asking her what she wants to do? No, you be the man here and say, this is how things are going to go. Or better yet, you stay here and take care of the kids this morning. I'm going off for two hours. And you march down to the, the local lawyer's office to consult different attorneys who's going to be your shark to get rid of her. We had two kids, a house, careers, surrounded by good friends and neighbors that loved us. How could I just throw it all away? How could you? She's the one that threw it away. She begged me to stay. She told me she would change. 
I thought long and hard about it, consulted with friends and family. For all the above reasons, I decided to stay. Smack! Dude, you don't consult friends and family. They're going to tell you to stay. They don't want a family broken up. They don't want your their relationship with you to change. They're going to say, stay for the kids. Well, the irony is, wait to the end of this story about the kids. And I, and I can't wait to fill you in on that part, guys. That our marriage wasn't perfect, that I had been in situations as well where I was tempted, and while I never did anything, when it came to that moment, I could see how she could mess up. That's not a mess up. Three years is not a mess up. I gave her a second chance. Smack. Let's see how that works out. I told her I needed her to block him from all media, to delete WhatsApp, to unlock her phone so I could check it every now and then, just so I can regain trust. That she remained present in our marriage, in our love life. She agreed to everything. Of course she did. She said she felt like she was living a double life and it was, it was a weight off her shoulders and it was good. A double life she brought on herself. At once and for once in a long time, we were good. The next three months were awesome. Hanging out, sex life skyrocketed and we cared for each other again. No, that's called her being on good behavior, love bombing you. And, and, and what, you, you got more than missionary? Oh, great. Maybe instead of regular missionary, maybe she pulled her legs back behind her ears once or twice just to spice up the missionary. But the point is, I bet he wasn't getting any doggy. I bet she wasn't screaming. No cow, re reverse cowgirl and all that other shit. No, oh, no, no, no. Different parts of the house when the kids are out at playing baseball. No, he wasn't getting that. Then I went out of town on my annual trip with my closest guy friends. I was gone for five days and things seemed fine at first. She was flirty, sent me some sexy pictures while I was away, and told me she missed me all the time. Then she accidentally posted a new picture that she told me she deleted after she sent me to her Instagram story. Oops. Apparently only two other three people saw that and she pulled it down right away. Oh, imagine that. She's back to her old tricks. And I saw it. I asked her why she did that and, and uh, who was she trying to send it to. How could a picture like that that you send, said you deleted now end up on Instagram? I began to become suspicious again. Gee, there's a freaking surprise. A leopard doesn't change the spots. The moment I got home, I went to look in her phone. Nothing. Clean. Then it hit me. She had a work phone as well. I opened it, and there it was. The first message was to Claire. Hey, baby, it's Claire or Charlotte or I forget who I'm supposed to be. Hope you had a great day and get home safe. To which my wife replied with a heart. Claire, as it turns out, was actually C, a father who volunteered at my kid's elementary school with my wife. I wasn't done looking. I searched more. I got on her phone, her other phone, and looked through her Snapchat. She had a message from a guy named P. I asked her about this, and by this time, I was we were yelling. That was the only message I ever saw on Snapchat from him. Yes, baby, looks so good, he said. Everything else was deleted. She said that he was a personal trainer who she was sending progress photos to. Nothing more. She swore. Um, I was a personal trainer for many years. I own my own business. And none of my female clients, and I had some good-looking female clients on occasion, they never sent me naked pictures of themselves showing me their progress, for God's sakes. Then I swiped up, which I guess opened Save Snapchat Conversations. And it was a hell of a lot more than a personal trainer. She went ballistic on me, grabbed her phone, slammed the door to the bedroom, telling me I was crazy. How's he crazy? He found all this evidence here. You're back to your old tricks. He gave you a chance. Look how well that worked out. All it took a few months. She was just better covering her tracks. She was just love bombing him. Lawyer. Um... Blah, 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 and my constant invasion of her privacy was driving her further away from me. I was a controlling, mentally abusive a-hole, according to her. Oh, so this is all in response to him being an a-hole, huh? <clears throat> Do you think this guy's out talking to other women? Over the next few days, it didn't stop. The discoveries. More conversations from different guys, all inappropriate, all sexual, all flirtations. And he goes through this giant list of, like, letters for different dudes. I'm not going to read them all here, but there were, like, eight or nine of them. She told me it was all from before, from before our big fight, and that she wasn't doing it anymore. That it was a fantasy escape, that she never did anything physical with any of these guys. Sure, honey. She asked me to try again, that I need to trust her, and that she was telling the truth. <laughs> Meanwhile, she's thinking, man, this guy's so fucking stupid, I can't believe he's buying this. Again, I thought long and hard about it, and this time, I stayed. 
Smack. Okay, let, let's just see if this is going to work out again for you, bonehead. Again, I gave her another chance. I told myself I was doing it for the kids. Uh, what I told a friend was, I'd rather live in hell for the next 10 years until my kids are out of the house than miss even a single day in their lives. My kids need their dad. Their kids need their dad. But their kids need to live in a home where mom and dad aren't fighting all the time. And they know what's going on. They need to see an example of, of, of a loving... Not only loving relationship with mom and dad, but also solid friendship of loyalty, support, respect. They're not seeing that. And if you're not careful, your kids, whether they intend to or not, will end up relationships just like this. They know something's fucked up here. <clears throat> I think a lot of fathers say that in these situations. I'm going to do it for the kids, to protect the kids. Deep down, that's just an excuse because they don't have the balls to go through the divorce process. And yeah, the divorce process is hell. Again, things were good. No, they weren't. She's just putting on an act. Not great, but good. We went back in a groove. Everything was better. We were getting along, not fighting. The kids loved it as well as we were all spending more time together. Then things started to revert back to the old ways, little by little. Duh, moron. She started again to spend more time on her phone. Before we set a no phones after 6 p.m. rule of the house, and little by little, she was that was broken by both of us. She started to become more distant again. She started to tell little white lies and then bigger lies. I can tell my wife is lying. I've always been able to, to, to tell. It drives her crazy. If you've always been able to tell she's lying, then you shouldn't be in this position, dude. So don't bullshit us. Come on here. So I knew she was lying. I would ask her about it, and she'd blub at me, freak out, and then yell that I'm crazy and to back off. And she isn't doing anything. So do you guys think this woman respects her husband? Obviously, your answer is no. A big, giant fucking no. When we don't respect men, you can expect varying degrees of this shit. Uh, I was no longer affected by her yelling. My intuition was telling me something was off again. You think? I wasn't crazy, or I went crazy. I started looking through her phone, usage records. I'd place items in drawers and open up certain amounts to see what she was doing, where she was going. I did a people lookup, search of just about every number, sending texts to her phone. I wasn't going to be tricked trick to, trick to manipulate again. I was all over her, all over it. I wasn't, getting, I wasn't getting played again, but I was, and I did. It finally came down to the end when I used her thumb again to unlock her phone, and again I found her WhatsApp hidden away, and again I saw messages, this time to a guy named S, who actually is a work client of mine. <laughs> Talk about disrespect. So I'm assuming when she's asleep, he grabs her phone, uses uses her thumb on her phone. You think she would find a different way to secure her phone? Those messages contain some of the something of some of the graphics, leaving nothing to the imagination. Images that would make porn stars blush. Then there was the messages from C. Nothing overly graphic. A titty picture here and there, but nothing much else. But mainly just messages of "You deserve better than him," and "Run away with me," and, and "Never look back," and "I want to go camping and lay under the stars with you." And last but not least, "Thank I think I love you." So she's talking to all these guys. And every time she does this, it's more of an F you to her husband who's telling the story here. Don't worry, guys. This guy will finally redeem himself. But my God, all the suffering these fools put themselves through. That all happened in January. Oh, that's in January. What about February? Uh, why am I so weak? Why hadn't I left yet? Why did I give her yet another chance? I felt bad for her. I felt like she had an addiction. Smack! You felt bad for her? God mighty. I felt like I could help her. Okay, Mr. White Knight. And if I could, maybe she could go back to giving the attention she gives to the other guys to me. I told myself it, it was for the kids. I told myself it was for financial security. She swore to me it was just a fantasy, that nothing was real. It was her escape, where she can be loved and not always under my control, my rules, my interrogations. Then get a fucking Fabio book that you can find on that little small book and magazine section at, at Walgreens or CVS. Uh, I said, but I wouldn't have to interrogate you if you didn't start doing it, it again. I wouldn't have to search for your phone records if I wasn't being overly lied to, and I was right. It was happening to the date on the conversation proved that she started it back up again before I started digging into it, and I was right. And for what it was worth, I was right. She told me that the more I tried to tighten my grip, the more I tried to control her. This sounds like the line from Star Wars when Princess Leia said to Tarkin, 
the more you tighten your grip, the more star systems will slip through your fingers. I, I, I was waiting for the fucking slip through your fingers line from her. The more she was going to move further from the marriage. She showed no remorse, no resentment. Of course she has no remorse. She thinks she's justified her actions, but this guy's acting like a goddamn candy ass. We fought a lot. The kids started to cover their ears and run into another room every time we started to raise our voices. Smack! You're hurting your kids, Dad. Come on here. Why couldn't I leave? Why was I still there? I couldn't figure it out. I still can't figure it out. Again, she claims she is finally done with the cheating. It's out of her system. She won't do it again. She deleted WhatsApp again for the 10th time. She still wouldn't show me her phone because she said it was an invasion of her privacy. And to an extent, she is right. But she also wouldn't give me the proof that anything has changed. From the, the, the moment he found her cheating the first time, if he was going to leave her, he should have laid all these terms. What's going to happen if I catch you doing this bullshit again? And then if she did, which she, of course she would do, at that point he should have left. She knows that hit the so-called consequences for him mean nothing. Just like a kid. You tell a kid he better not do something, he does it, and you don't respond accordingly, that kid's going to keep doing it worse. Just like children. But yes, they are like children. So enter COVID and the stay-at-home order. It was hard. We were all stuck in the same house. She had nowhere to go, and I got crazier and crazier because I could tell she started lying to me again. I downloaded WhatsApp on my phone and sent messages waiting to see if they were ever delivered. Then I left the house to go pick up some food, and when I got back, I saw the messages were delivered. She downloaded the app again while I was out of the house. I called her out. She told me I was crazy. The next day, she deleted her account again, and her profile was gone. My guess was she blocked me. She said she didn't. We yelled again, and she told me to back off. I asked to see her phone, and she refused. For the, the three or four of you guys that actually left here, I'm glad you attended this, listening to this story here, but see? This is a this is what not to do to help guys learn. This is fucking crazy. By this point, I'm no longer the fun-loving, carefree, spontaneous, generous, loving guy I once was. I'm cynical. I'm untrusting. I'm conniving. I'm intrusive. I'm a shitty person, and I'm broken, and I feel like crap. Was she right? Did she really just delete it? Fast forward a month, and I just installed a new wireless router in the house. One that tracks what all the devices are doing and what apps are being used. And there was the fucking WhatsApp two hours and ten minutes used yesterday. She really did block me from it. She blocked her husband from the app so I wouldn't see what she what she was doing online. Duh. What do you expect? I was done. I had enough. Sure, dude. I went to the house, packed a suitcase, and left my house. I called my friend who's a lawyer and told him everything. Why didn't you do that years ago? He is helping me put the paperwork together. I sat in my car yesterday for four hours, sitting in the parking lot, crying, angry, and depressed. Sad, but also relieved and proud of myself. Well, you gotta start somewhere. It's about time, dude. I then got the courage to check up into check into a hotel. My wife was texting my phone, asking where I was, but I didn't answer. I turned my laptop on, played some video games, and then went to sleep. I'm done. Can't go back, but she but she she cannot stop. I've turned into a different person. So has she. No, she hasn't. This is who she's been all along, man. She probably married you thinking you're the nice guy provider, and, well, she's right. And she can be with you and have her fun on the side. That's what a lot of women do in varying degrees. <clears throat> Today I came back home but moved out of the bedroom and into my guest room. I can't afford to live in an apartment right now. Oh, my wife lost her job during COVID. Divorce is a long process, and I figured I didn't want to make it look like I was abandoning my family. I told my wife that we need to figure out child custody schedule first that we would start integrating it in our home while we work on selling the house and putting the divorce paperwork in, after, in order. Then on my days, I would be, uh, then on my days, I'd be responsible for the kids and she on her days, even though we were living in the same house, it might not be perfect, but it's a start. Yeah, I'm sure she was so enthusiastic about that. Today, I still have moments of weakness, moments of panic, moments where I wanted to run back to her and say, fine, let's just have an open marriage. Smack! Um, she's been having an open marriage <laughs> and like you behaving how you do are going to attract any women that you like. You behave like you have been. You're just going to attract women that are going to treat you the same way that your wife is treating you. You need to work on yourself, dude. But that never works. I'm way too crazy now to ever allow that. No, I need to keep going. One foot in front of the other, one foot in front of the other. You're darn right. Now we're on to the update. We're on to the update where things are definitely going to get better for this guy. 
He says, uh, how it went from here. After learning she was a serial cheater, we cohabitated for six months. I slept downstairs. She was upstairs. We didn't know what we wanted to do. There was a lot of confusion. There were times we went back and forth with each other and times we hated each other's guts and yelled and screamed. These poor kids. Dude, if you have to sleep in your car, it's better than putting your kids through this shit. It was always the worst when she was drinking. Those were the nights I could be certain she was texting other men. Still, you're getting divorced. Let her text all she wants. However, I didn't get the courage—I didn't get the courage to finalize my divorce. Smack, pussy. We talked to a mediation lawyer. I had paperwork drawn up, but I couldn't bring myself to sign it. I was so afraid of divorce about what it meant to me, my finances, kids, happiness, assets, including our house. And I was terrified. Bro, plenty of men have gone through this, and they've lived to tell the tale. So can you. I told myself over and over I would rather live in hell until my kids left the house than blow apart our family because of our decision my significant other was making over and over until I couldn't. Bro, you are blowing up your family. You are ruining your family by being a part of this whole thing. Now, you could have been a man a long time ago and laid down the law with her and made her realize that there was actual consequences, but what's done is done. The, the, the sooner you end this and part ways and, and have partial custody of the kids or whatever, the better you're going to make their lives. Stop saying it's all about the kids. You're doing it because you're fucking scared. Grow a pair. You have it in you. One day she was drinking with her friends and came home fairly tipsy. I won't go into the details of the story, but I caught her again. She was texting her personal trainer, one of the guys I knew she had cheated on me with before. She told me she wasn't, and I caught her. Talking to other guys is cheating. Then she blew up at me. Called me spineless, said that I would never file for divorce because I'd never be able to fuck a girl hotter than her in my life. All types of other nasty things. Well, she's right. You still didn't have the balls to do what you had to do to file the papers. Yeah. And then it hit me. I was so calm, I reached my point I couldn't come back from. I walked in my office, pulled up the divorce contract, docu signed it, and calmly hit send. Thank you. I walked back into the kitchen where my ex was standing and told her I just filed the divorce, and I went back to my office and felt relief. Early that month, I was talking to a co-worker about my situation. He had just filed for divorce himself and went through a bit of a nasty battle over child custody, for which he ended up getting 100%. As an analogy for my situation, it really hit home for me and helped. I will say in here in case it helps someone else in the same situation. The way I felt before I filed for divorce, knowing she was cheating, knowing what I should, but not finding the strength to actually do it was like standing on a ladder. I'm on a ladder and the ground is covered in fog. I can't see the ground. I know I'm on the bottom step. I know the ground is right under me, but I can't see it. And it was too scary to step off until I did. And the ground was right where it was supposed to be. And it was easy, effortless, and now I'm safely off the ladder. And able to move in any direction I want, I described the feeling in the weeks as after as immediate relief. Yeah, you finally did it. Many guys... Plenty, countless numbers of guys have gone through divorce. The process was hell, but the reward was the freedom afterwards. A guy can get through it. He says, for years, I felt like I was up against a cliff with my toes hanging over the edge. And the weight of everything pushing and pushing wanted me to jump, but I could not. I wouldn't. And finally, the weight of everything was too much, and I took a step. And it turns out, free falling feels a hell of a lot better, and the landing was soft and comfortable. Now, skipping to now, I know my situation here will be different than most. I got out really well. I kept the house. She moved out. I owe her half the equity, for which I'm making payments to her for the next five years. <clears throat> it's a lot of money. Million dollar house. We split custody 50-50. She waived her right to alimony. There you go. He says, I also make significantly more money than her. Now you know why she's keeping this guy around. He makes way more money than her. I'm glad he's keeping the house. He's paying her her share of the equity. And that'd be nice if he had the kids all the time, but still... I love the new alimony part. Uh, I am paying a bit more in child support than I owe according to the state of California. I'm also paying for things like sports, camping, etc. We're finalizing the rest of the divorce through a mediator, and things have been amicable so far. Fingers crossed. Thank God. I was hard on this guy, and I, I, he needs someone to be hard on him. My God, all the suffering he went through, and ultimately ending in divorce. That's where they always end. As for everything else, I tried online dating and found instant success. Smack! Bro, you are in no position to date anyone. Get involved with anyone. Get through the divorce. 
work on helping your kids heal from things they've always been scarred from and figure out what the hell's wrong with you to make you such a freaking whipping post and such a ass-kissing tampon. I, I can't think of anything else to say about, about that. but Because otherwise, you're going to be in the same situation all over again soon. Your lack of self-respect and standing up for yourself will cause you to attract women. They're going to treat you in varying degrees the same way as your wife once they realize that you're a doormat. It's going to happen. You shouldn't be dating anybody. It was nice to talk to people again who actually care. To date, and then go out again. Everything was different. Everything was better. I got a huge shot of confidence and that had been completely shattered in years prior. It feels really good. My finances are stabilized. My relationship with my kids is better. Quality of life. Also, she was wrong. Now I still have bad moments. I still have moments where I'm confused, hurt, and all, but they're getting fewer and further between. I'm on a much better path. I feel optimistic for the first time in a long time. To the person still reading this, this might be been in, been in my shoes. You deserve better. The ground isn't far. Step off the ladder. Exactly. I'm happy for him. He's out. The kids are going to be better. I'm especially happy for the kids. Not being in that environment. I mean, anybody who's been in an environment mom and dad are fighting all the time. It's a miserable experience. Now he goes on to his final update, how things in progress reports. He says that anyone around, I left my wife after years of neglect and her constant cheating. I caught her multiple times in the last three years, blah, 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 of our 12-year marriage. I stayed for the kids, blah, blah, blah. He says, uh, that was then, this is now. I took the high road. It didn't get better. It, it didn't get bitter. I didn't fight for every penny I had. I prioritized my mental health over money during the divorce. We had a mediator. Things went well. I only really had to put my foot down once and say, fuck you, lawyer up. And she backed down. All in all, it went really smooth. Now, I know this is not the same for everyone. I'm dating this woman who is also in a bitter divorce right now, separated for over two years, and still in court at least once a month to battle over the smallest things. If I just to fight, I feel sometimes it's exhausting. If this is you, I get it, and I'm sorry you're going through this. Not all divorce is clean. This, was, this, this isn't a one-size-fits-all. Smack! He's dating a woman who's going through a bitter, nasty divorce. Yeah, they can have things to talk about. How do you know she isn't like part of the cause for the, the, the divorce? What I say to this guy isn't careful. He's got every woman just like his, his ex-wife. He says, my relationship with my ex is better than it has been over the last five years of our marriage. We talk about nothing other than co-parenting for the most part, other than a few minutes of venting about our jobs. Two kids and tons of sports leads to a crazy, hectic schedule. Her new boyfriend seems like a really good guy. I want to warn him, but it's not my place. No, she found herself another sucker to, to rope in. A single mom roping in a sucker, and he's going to be just like this guy. He should tell him. <laughs> I used to be worried about what she was telling people, but I don't care anymore. And honestly, I don't think she does either. If I had known it would transition this smoothly for me, I would have divorced her years prior and saved myself the mental stress and pressures over the years, the few years. But again, I know everyone is different. See? Why didn't I do this years ago? Exactly. Listen to this. What I do want to tell people going through the same thing I went through is it's not over. Even my girlfriend, who is on the complete opposite side of the divorce, uh, and end of the divorce is a big deal spectrum, is in a massively better place now. Be introspective. Figure out what you want. Understand where you went wrong as well. Visualize what a good relationship looks like to you, and don't settle for the same shit again. Be better, demand better, and don't let it get to that point again. I agree with that, and I hope he follows his own advice. He says, something is very wrong in society. There's so much instant gratification, dopamine hits, and now an now anonymity, barrage of sex-filled Photoshop bachelor TV love images being thrown at you every second of the day. It's hard to always look across the couch at your significant other and think, this is amazing, I'm so lucky. It goes for, all, for your partner as well. Some just have much more self-control or better friends to keep you from sitting your merry life in front of an oncoming train. The funny thing is, when I found my wife was cheating, I also found out her two best friends were also cheating. There you go. You pay attention to her friends are. There you go. All three of them are now divorced. They all encourage each other. They bragged about it. They all refuse to mature, grow old, settle down. I can't tell you how many times I heard I still mentally feel like I'm in college. I don't feel 30 or 35 or 40. Every birthday was the same and the drinking was worse. Sad reality. You always pay attention to your wife's friends. And it's like they probably all got married at the same time. They probably all had kids at the same time. Now they're all cheating at the same time. Now getting divorced at the same time. And now they'll all be on to their second marriages and do the same fucking thing. This is why guys need these, this, this channel. Channels like this to learn what not to do and what happens. Anyway, my advice, don't sit there and try to repair something that is beyond broken. 
Exactly. There's so much better out there, especially if you're sure of what you're looking for. In the end, I do believe that being single for the rest of my life was better for me mentally than staying in a broken, abusive relationship. Go Google how to file for divorce in your state, download the paperwork, make it a real possibility in your mind. Then when the time is right, you can make it right for yourself and move on if you have to. And one last thing. Here's my favorite part. When I did file for divorce and sat my kids down to tell them, the first question from my nine-year-old daughter was, what took you so long? Kids see way more than you think. Don't stay in it for them. You are teaching them what a broken relationship looks like. Right there is nine-year-old daughter. What took so long? Those kids are miserable in that situation. Exactly. Thank God she could see it was a problem. I just hope the daughter doesn't grow up to be like a mother or the son grows up to be like this guy. You know, but my God. So anyhow, guys, again, for the four or five of you to finish the whole story here, there you go. For your relationship, guys, learn from this. I hope you learn. Don't put up with all this bullshit. It's going to end in divorce anyway. You know? That's why you spend years with your girl, but also with the years you're with your girl. She's on good behavior. You're watching everything to really see who she really is. So many women will marry a guy they're not in love with just because they're getting close to 30, want a rock in their finger, they want to have kids, and they see you as a provider, and they think, hey, I can have fun on this side. Like I said, I guarantee you this woman and her friends probably got married about the same time, probably had kids at the same time, cheated at the same time, divorced at the same time. And then they'll go on to the next marriage and do the same shit, all, rinse, recycle, repeat. But you don't have to be that guy that gets caught up in all that shit. So I actually wish this guy the best. All right, guys, that is it for today. Be sure to comment down below. Let me know what you think about this. Be sure to like the video, share it with your friends, and subscribe. I'll catch you next time.